Hey there and welcome back to RimWorld. My name is Pete and today we complete episode 6 of our RimWorld Ice Sheet Survival Series. In the last episode we actually came quite close to dying, first from a group of Manhunter Snowhairs and then from an infection later on. However, we defeated both and our tribal colonist Cambiar is now recovering in his bedroom. The big goal for today's episode is to finally start researching microelectronics basics, because that would then allow us to build a comms console, which should make trading a whole lot easier, and in my opinion that is a necessity if we want to prosper out here on the ice sheet. Before we can start with that research though, we still have to finish researching machining, which is what Cambiar is working on at the moment. Not for long, however, because after a few moments we have the first event of today's episode. A crashed escape pod has landed and that means Cambiar can once again stock up on the food reserves. Now Shigeko here, the colonist that we just rescued, she might just survive if we let her rest a bit, but that is not really what we want to happen, so uh, we'll strip her of her clothing and then let the outside temperatures do the rest. And that was quick, before Cambiar is even able to haul everything back, Shigeko dies of hypothermia, and that means Cambiar can add one more body to his already pretty sizable food stockpile. The day continues with a bit of research before Cambiar then heads off to bed around midnight, but his sleep is disturbed shortly after by a tornado that is moving dangerously close to our base. Now luckily it eventually passes by to the west of our little encampment, but a few meters closer and we might have just lost a lot of valuable stuff. If they were hit by the tornado, our defenses would have likely suffered a lot and our small research outpost could have been destroyed as well. Luckily though none of that happened and so Cambia can now continue with his research. A full night of sleep and some breakfast and we're back outside, and the next event that Randy Random throws at us is a rather harmless solar flare. This shuts down all electrical devices, meaning the heater inside of our bedroom won't work for a while, but Cambiar has pretty solid cold protection and he just got out of bed, so the solar flare here will likely not affect us all that much. Now in the evening a quick break from the research routine, as we will have Cambiar mine one single block of steel. This can be used to first of all finish up the defenses, as you can see we still have one piece of steel wall left that needs to be constructed, and afterwards, with the solar flare conveniently ending as well, we can use the rest to build a small lamp next to the research bench. Thanks to its close proximity to the wind turbine it will be directly connected, and once it gets power it will illuminate the small room here, allowing Cambiar to do research in the late evening or at night without suffering from the small negative in darkness thought. Not really a change that will have an overly noticeable effect, but a small improvement nonetheless. Just a few seconds after that, a refugee is then once again begging for our help, and since this event has been a reliable source of food and equipment in the past, we are going to offer our safety once again. So Fernanda here at least temporarily joins the colony, and a few seconds after that her pursuers appear on the map, three guys this time, two of them equipped with a ranged weapon. Now while Fernanda heads back to the base we will have Cambiar equip the short bow here. I noticed that we still had it in storage and it's of good quality, and looking at its stats it's actually a bit better than the auto pistol that he currently has equipped. Now the problem with Fernanda at this point was that because of her hypothermia her movement speed got slower and slower. This allowed one of the attackers here to catch up and we had no other choice but to fight. And that fight lasted only for a few seconds, Fernanda was clearly outmatched and went down after just two hits. Now that wasn't the big problem here, I expected her to die regardless. The more interesting thing was that her attackers now decided to not even bother with Cambiar, instead opting to kidnap Fernanda here and then leave. And that is of course something we cannot let happen, precious food escaping the map here, so we have Cambiar take matters into his own hands here. Now Cambiar does land a few hits, but none of the attackers seem to be willing to fight back, so we have to pursue with them getting closer and closer to the edge of the map.
Ultimately though, we are sadly unsuccessful in hunting one of them down, and so we're now back at square one, the only thing we really gained is a bit of shooting experience for Cambiar. After a good night of sleep, we then once again find Cambiar back at the research bench, and the next event here provides us with a substantial mood boost. A psychic sooth gives Cambiar a plus 15 to his mood here, so maybe this day will be a bit more successful than the previous one. The rest of this and the next day remain pretty much uneventful, so we jump ahead roughly one and a half days here until we get the message that Cambiar has successfully researched machining. Now, this in itself doesn't give us a whole lot of options that we can use at the moment, but it does unlock microelectronics basics, and that is going to be our next big research project. Like I said earlier, this will allow us to build a comms console and an orbital trade beacon, and with those two things we should be able to drastically increase the frequency of trade out here on the ice sheet. The next morning then the psychic sooth finally comes to an end, but that is quite alright, Camir's mood is still high enough to avoid a mental break, because the fun he gets from researching provides him with tons of joy. Once again another uneventful day passes by and so we once again jump ahead to the next morning, and this time the day starts with an eclipse. This would be a problem if we had solar panels to generate power, but we don't and Cambiar also has himself a light, so we should be fine. Well, that might have been a bit premature here. Our power goes out regardless as our wind turbine breaks down here. Luckily though, we still have spare components in storage, so it's an easy fix. With the power back up, Cambia returns to his research, but we can see here that our reserves of human meat are slowly but steadily winding down. We only have about one and a half corpses left here, so I'm hoping for a small raid or something soon, just to maybe get two or three additional ones to the stockpile. The next day then the sun shines bright again as the eclipse has come to an end, and we are actually also going to do something about our food situation right now, because I have spotted a polar bear close to the base, and that means it's now time for a bit of hunting. With our ranged weapon we should be able to land a few hits here, and I think we're also a bit faster than the polar bear, so we should also be able to outrun it. Alright, two hits before we have to retreat, nothing life-threatening here, but enough to weaken the polar bear as we now lure him towards our traps. Now, while it is pretty hard to get small animals to trigger traps, bigger animals like polar bears will trigger them very often, and with a total of seven traps in place, that is what I'm counting on here. And lovely, here we are, trap number three kills the polar bear, and so we now have a bit more meat should our reserves of human corpses eventually come to an end. Once the traps are all reset and Cambiar has had something to eat, he can then continue with his research, and we are now in fact down to the last corpse. And the next morning then, Cambiar consumes that in one go, and so we're now left with only a muffalo, a polar bear and a few snow hares. Those will of course also feed him and satisfy his hunger, but they will not provide the plus 20 raw cannibalism thought, which has been essential so far in keeping Cambiar's mood above the mental break threshold. One more thing that is worth noting at the moment is that we're back in spring, and so the temperatures are rising. And that of course also affects our mountain base, which is now slowly but steadily getting warmer. Now, this is not a huge problem at the moment, but once the rooms inside of the mountain consistently average above minus 17 degrees, we should be a bit worried, because that is when the chance for infestation rises again. So we'll hopefully manage to get through the summer without one, but for the next year we then probably want to research coolers as well. 
Now we'll switch over to the polar bear for food here, mostly because I'm still hoping we'll be able to butcher the snow hares, because their leather has a slightly better cold protection compared to the polar bear skin. It's not a huge difference, but it might give us a small edge later on. Then, while Cambia is sleeping, two events happen at the same time. First of all, we once again get another peace talks opportunity, but without food reserves we'll likely not be able to make it there. Much more interesting though is the fact that a bulk goods trader has just arrived. This is, I believe, only the second trader to pay us a visit in this playthrough, and I hope these guys have a few things that we could use, most importantly some wood and medicine. Alright, here they are, let's trade. Alright, and this right here, more or less the perfect trader at this point. He has medicine, he has wood, and he's willing to buy all the equipment we have. So let's actually start with that and sell him all the clothing we have. We have the best stuff already equipped on Cambiar, so we don't really have a use for the rest. Now, this guy also sells Mega Sloth Wool, and we want to buy 120 of that, as in terms of cold protection, Mega Sloth Wool is the best fabric in the game, and the 120 units are needed to eventually craft ourselves a Mega Sloth Wool Parka, which I believe provides cold protection to somewhere around minus 120 degrees, so it pretty much removes the freezing temperatures out here on the ice sheet as a negative factor once and for all. Now, we would need to research complex clothing to craft one, but that is a quick research project that we should be able to squeeze in without much trouble. Now we're also going to buy all of the pretty overpriced herbal medicine here. Only three units, but those could be the deciding factor between life and death, so this is definitely not the right thing to cheap out on. With the remaining money we're then going to buy 100 wood. This finally allows us to build a butcher's table, which in turn allows us to be a lot less wasteful with the corpses we consume. And that is pretty much all we need and also almost all we can afford here, so uh, let's accept the trade. And I feel like I have to stress how important this trade just was for progress in this playthrough, especially the wood was always the limiting factor, and now that we have some, I think things are going to drastically improve. However, and I know this seems a bit contradicting, I'm not really in a rush to build a butcher's table, because ideally I want to build it only once. Sadly, once it is built, the butcher's table cannot be reinstalled at a different place. The only way to move it is to deconstruct it and reconstruct it, which will always waste a few precious resources. And of course, since we're still pretty short on wood, I don't really want to do that. Now I'm thinking about installing a mod that allows all objects to be reinstalled, because in Brimworld there is a mod for pretty much anything, but I would actually like to hear your opinion on that first. I originally intended to keep this playthrough entirely vanilla, however I also feel like installing a mod like this would not really change all that much. So uh, let me know what you think about that in the comments below, and in the meantime we will continue with a bit of mining. Now, you know that my plan is to eventually build a mountain base. However, this large steel vein here is a bit of an annoyance at the moment. I don't really know how deep it goes into the mountain, and at the same time I don't want to waste the resources. So I don't want to prematurely plan a base around it, only to then discover that it's actually larger than anticipated. So to prevent that, we are going to mine it out entirely now, even though we don't really need the materials at the moment, but this should allow us to plan our base with a lot more certainty. Then at night, while Cambiar is asleep, we have another mild inconvenience here. His heater has broken down, but that's nothing we need to take care of immediately. The outside temperatures are not cold enough to cool the room down to a level where it would give Cambiar hypothermia, so we'll wait until the morning and then take care of the repairs once Cambiar is fully rested. Then, while Cambia is still busy mining, we have another raid coming in. This one, however, not really a threat at all at this point. One single archer is approaching the base, and that means in all likelihood Cambia won't even have to pay attention to the attacker. He can simply continue to mine and let the deadfall traps take care of the rest. And that is also exactly what happens after trap number 3, the attacker falls dead, and so Cambia can finally go back to consuming human meat. We are also going to equip our attacker's shortbow here. Its quality is one level above Cambia's shortbow, and so it is a slight upgrade.
Once all the deadfall traps are reset and the equipment is hauled into storage, Cambiar can continue mining, and a short while later the steel vein is more or less completely mined out, apart from the two blocks that remain close to his bedroom. While Cambiar is hauling things back and forth, we then have another escape pod crashing down. And once again, this guy has no life-threatening injuries, so we might need a few more drastic measures to get him to die. On the way back, then he recovers and actually joins the colony out of thankfulness. However, as usual, his membership will be only temporary. Out in the cold, we once again strip him of his clothing and then leave him out there for the elements. Then, while Cambia sleeps safe and sound and our latest colony member slowly freezes to death, we have another snow hare attacking. Yes, once again, a local snow hare has gone manhunter and is now heading straight for the base. This time, however, we're only dealing with one and not with four like in the last episode, so I think we should be fine. Now, I actually wanted to send our latest acquisition out to fight, but sadly the cold has already rendered him unable to move, and so it once again comes down to Cambiar. As expected, the snow hare makes it out of the traps unharmed, and Cambiar also misses with his bow, and so he now has to deal with the problem in close combat. Alright, the snow hare is dead, but Cambiar earned himself quite a few wounds in the fight, so the first priority here will be to patch all of them up to avoid another infection. Afterwards, Cambia can then also mine the remaining two steel chunks here. I don't want them to go to waste, even though they are somewhat protecting the bedroom at the moment. However, the bedroom will not remain here for the long term, as we are definitely going to dig deeper into the mountain soon. Then, while Cambia is resting and healing his wounds, outside our latest colony member dies, and then, with his last injury about to heal up, Cambia once again gets an infection. This time, however, we have a small advantage compared to the last episode, and that is our small reserve of herbal medicine. So we're now going to use that to treat the infection, and using medicine will slightly improve the treatment quality, which in turn increases the rate at which Cambiar develops an immunity. A bit of bed rest also helps speed up the recovery time, and looking at the numbers here, things don't look too dire for Cambiar. It seems like he gains progress towards the immunity faster than the infection spreads, so he should once again survive. And with that and Cambia returning to the research bench, I would actually like to make the cut in today's episode. A slightly shorter one this time, not quite the 20 minutes you're used to, but I feel like this right here is a good point nonetheless. We are ready to start base building in the next episode, an episode in which we are very likely also going to unlock microelectronics basics, which will once again be a tremendous step forward. Once again, let me know in the comments below whether or not you want me to install the small mod I mentioned earlier. And of course, if you liked the episode, I would also be happy if you could leave a thumbs up. If you want to support the channel, then go ahead and feel free to subscribe. And as always, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.